Twins Alessia Vera Shep and Livia Clara Shep were born on the 7th of October 2004 in San Sulpice, Switzerland, to Irina Mamie Lucidi Shep, an Italian born Swiss lawyer, and Matthias Casper Shep, a Canadian born Swiss engineer, both of whom worked for the Philip Morris tobacco firm. Irina and Matthias met at a work retreat in 2003 and married three months prior to the girls being born, in July of 2004 in Italy. Growing up, both Alessia and Livia were described as lively, bright and confident young girls who loved spending time with one another. It's difficult to explain the full extent of the bond that the twins shared. Alessia and Livia were inseparable. By mid-2010, Irina had grown apart from Matthias. He had become rather controlling, taking charge of almost every aspect of the Shep family's lives. He would monitor what they would watch on television, decide when it was time to go to bed, and he had high expectations at the standard of which chores were to be performed. Irina told Matthias that they needed to separate, and as a result, he moved into an apartment across town so that he could still be close to his children. Matthias got to spend time with Alessia and Livia regularly, the girls going to their father's home every weekend. According to Irina, despite their own issues, Matthias was an attentive father, and she didn't think he was a bad person. It was in January of 2011 when those who knew Matthias noticed a change in his demeanour after returning from a three-week vacation with Alessia and Livia. Many believed that he was struggling with the separation from Irina, though he did not admit to this. On the 28th of January 2011, 43-year-old Matthias picked up Alessia and Livia from their mother's home for another weekend visit at his own apartment. On Saturday morning, Matthias texted Irina saying, We are all right, we'll return on Monday. Normally, Matthias would have returned the girls home on Sunday afternoon so that they would be back in time for school on Monday morning. Irina didn't want the girls' routine to change, not to mention she was obviously missing Alessia and Livia, and told her ex that she wanted them back on Sunday regardless. However, by Sunday night, the 30th of January, Matthias had not returned the girls, though they were seen playing with a neighbour's child at around 1pm that afternoon. Concerned, Irina tried calling him, but his phone appeared to be off, so she went across to his apartment, only to find it vacant. Sick with worry, Irina immediately went to the local police to report her six-year-old daughters as missing. However, they told her not to worry, as Matthias would more than likely return with the girls. However, Alessia and Livia did not turn up for school on Monday. Meanwhile, at approximately 5.04pm on the evening of January the 30th, Matthias Shep's Audi A6 was registered crossing the Swiss border into the Annecy region of France. Cellular data revealed that after leaving Saint-Sulpice, he travelled through Morge and Geneva before reaching France. The following day, January 31st, Matthias was seen on CCTV at 12.30pm withdrawing money from several cash points in Marseille, totalling approximately €7,000. He also purchased a postcard, which he then sent to Irina, the contents of which mainly revolved around the fact that Matthias couldn't bear to live without her. During his travels, Matthias also sent letters to Irina at a total of €4,400, though these letters were received some time later. The remainder of the money, around €2,500, remains unaccounted for. Later that night, Matthias, Alessia and Livia were seen boarding the ferry to Propriano in Corsica. 
Though the reasons as to why Matthias took the girls there is unclear, he did know Propriano quite well, having spent a lot of holidays and sailing trips there. An eyewitness reported seeing both Alessia and Livia happily playing together on the ferry, recalling one of the girls wearing a striped white, red and pink t-shirt, blue jeans, black boots and a white quilted anorak, whereas the other girl was wearing a purple ski anorak and white and pink shoes. After being told the descriptions of the girls' clothing, Irina confirmed that her daughters did own those particular clothing items. A female witness claimed to have seen Shep talking to a woman with dark blonde or brown hair with the twins alongside them wearing matching pink tracksuits, once again Irina confirming that Alessia and Livia possessed these tracksuits. Was the remainder of Matthias's money given to this mysterious woman to possibly take care of the twins? Matthias was seen leaving the ferry when it docked in Propriano at around 6.30am. He was then seen again later that day, the 1st of February, possibly with or without his daughters at around midday by a petrol station attendant on the island of Corsica. Matthias was then seen again boarding the ferry from Bastia to Toulon at around 9pm that night, arriving at its final destination at 7am on the 2nd of February. At approximately 9.13am, Shep's vehicle was captured on CCTV, once again driving through another tolling station, but in the footage captured, only Matthias appeared to be in the vehicle. Neither Alessia nor Olivia were present. Irina was in possession of the twins' passports, so how did the girls cross borders without them? Did Matthias perhaps hide his daughters in the trunk of his car when crossing? Swift's authorities became extremely concerned about Alessia and Livia's well-being in the days that followed, and this subsequently sparked an international manhunt. They ran checks on Matthias's car, which revealed his road trip across numerous countries. Due to the fact Matthias had abducted his children and had taken them across the border illegally, Swiss police contacted Interpol. Meanwhile, authorities in Corsica and France got involved in the investigation as the search for the ships intensified. Lakes and forests were searched on foot and in the air and police were given access to Matthias's home and boats to look for clues. Police discovered that, in the days prior to his departure from San Sulpice with his daughters, Matthias had been searching for information online in regards to firearms, suicide and poisons, as well as timetables for the ferry to Propriano. An email containing divorce documentation was also found, received on the 27th of January, the day prior to the weekend visit. A new will and testament, dated the same day, the 27th of January, was also found within Matthias' apartment, which detailed his wish for the apartment to go to Irina and everything else was to be left for Alessia and Livia. However, rather interestingly, the clause stated that if his daughters predeceased him, everything was to go to his brother and sister. In a search of the apartments conducted at the end of February by Irina, she found a few interesting clues. In a bin lay a note written by Matthias reading, delete Facebook, and she also discovered suitcases were missing and a pair of shoes Matthias never wore were caked in mud by the door. According to Irina, she told authorities, but nothing was done. Shep's boats were eventually searched, but nothing of significance was found. The 3rd of February was when Matthias arrived in Naples, Italy at around noon. Later that night, at approximately 10.47pm, Matthias threw himself under a train in Cerignola Campania in Puglia. The body was quickly identified as Matthias Shep, and his Audi was found abandoned nearby. He had approximately 100 euro on his person. There was no sign of Alessia or Livia, though following examination of the car, saliva belonging to one of the girls was found in the trunk, but unfortunately the sample was too small to analyse. This again indicated that Matthias possibly had Alessia and Livia in the trunk of his car when crossing borders. 
no blood or any other evidence was found, indicating that the girls had met foul play. However, following Matthias's suicide, Irina received the numerous letters which she had posted from across France and Italy. Though the letters themselves have never been released to the public, according to CNN, the final letter dated February 3rd contained the following chilling sentence. The children rest in peace. They have not suffered. The letter also indicated that Matthias was about to take his own life in Cherignola. It is entirely possible that Matthias did kill his daughters, afraid of losing them through a messy divorce, but aside from this letter, there is no proof or evidence to indicate that Alessia and Livia are deceased. With that being said, however, there is also no evidence to indicate that they are alive either. Did their father kill them following a mental breakdown? Perhaps throw them overboard one of the ferries? Or did he take them to a remote spot where they once had happy memories together, where he ended their lives? Or did he give the girls to someone else to be raised in another country under new identities? We simply do not know what happened to Alessia or Livia Shep. Their family appealed numerous times to the media, hoping that anyone with any information would come forward, but unfortunately, despite their efforts, Alessia nor Livia have ever been found. Numerous alleged sightings of the girls were called into police, one being in Italy on February the 5th, where two young girls were seen with a dark-haired woman, similar to the one seen talking to Matthias on the ferry in Corsica. However, when police followed this lead, they found nothing. In 2013, a Romani camp was searched following an overheard conversation regarding taking the twins from Corsica and that they were being held in one of the camps. Once again, however, this lead turned up nothing. Another potential lead came in 2014, when a photographer sent a letter to authorities claiming that he used to work in a shop that created fake passports. He recalled two young girls resembling Alessia and Livia in the shop whilst he made two passports, one for a girl going to Ottawa, another to La Chute in Quebec. Did Matthias perhaps use his remaining money to buy forged documentation for his daughters? Whether the girls seen were Alessia or Livia remains a mystery. Authorities believe that they are no longer alive, however, Irina has not given up hope at finding her daughters. She even created a charity for missing children, in the hopes to bring comfort to families who have suffered the same way that she has since her daughters disappeared. Both Alessia and Livia were six years old at the time of their disappearance in early 2011, with blonde hair and green eyes. They both wore glasses and spoke fluent French and Italian at the time of their disappearances. If they were in some sort of trouble, their family believes that the girls would have asked for help. Alessia and Livia have now been missing for 11 years, meaning that if they are alive today, the girls would be turning 18 years old in October of 2022.